Well, joining me now from Tel Aviv is Douglas Murray, the associate editor of The Spectator, the co-founder of the Muslim Debate Initiative, Abdullah al-Andalusi, and Dr. Isaldine Abulayesh, uh, the Canadian-Palestinian medical doctor, who's joined me again in the studio. And great to see you. Thank you very much Thank indeed you. for joining me. Let me start with you, if I may, uh, Dr. Abulayesh. Um, when you saw that interview, what was your response to the fact that it's an NHS doctor working and living in this country who was saying those things? It's important. I am coming, you know. I heard it. I heard many of your interviews. Jihad, the word jihad. My presence here is jihad. When I'm coming to meet with you to advocate for my Palestinian people and for saving lives of the people is jihad. And this is the highest level of jihad. The resistance against someone who is invading you, this is the lowest level of jihad. But jihad, when I'm traveling, when I am going to any place, even someone who is dying because of far away from his home is a kind of jihad. When we are fasting, when we are walking, walk is a jihad. And that's the most important. We need to understand it, not to take it out of the context in the limited understanding of it. When I am invaded with a disease, COVID, what do I do? I have to resist the COVID. And that's when we face cancer disease, any cancer. But with respect, disease... you, you would not categorize October the 7th as a resistance. It's, you know, I condemned the killing of any innocent human being. And for me, I was born. My daughters were killed before October 7th. Yes, I know. I was born as a Palestinian refugee before October 7th. My parents were refugees before 48. Yes. They were born in Palestine. So the history didn't start. The world is not created October 7th. That's what we need. And we are today. But I don't 12, think we, it's, but, it's important. But let me, doctor, let me, with, let me, let me respect, continue. I don't think let me continue. Anyone, anyone let me continue, speaks, please. All right. Today is the 12th of December. Today is the 12th of December where we have mm -hmm. more than 23 Palestinians thousand are killed more than 45,000 are severely wounded even the damage in the Gaza Strip as Borel mm. the representative of foreign affairs in the European Union it's far beyond the damage in Germany for six years in two months more than that so even you know how well, that's many... not true actually they, why no 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 there's, there was far he, he, they, he said it who said that Borel the representative of the European Union, the Foreign Affairs. Yeah, but there are far more people died in World War II than have died. No, no, in this the war. damage, the damage, the, the structural damage, damage, the destruction. Well, there certainly would have been more damage in Germany in World War II. He he mentioned that himself. Well, that's, you can that won't be factually accurate. But my, here's my question though for you: It all comes back to me. I'm I'm very happy to platform anybody on this show, right to the point where they try and convince me that what happened on October the seventh was not an act of terror. And when people refuse to concede that point, I, I find it very hard then to have a civilised discussion. It's why I got so annoyed last night. Well, okay. well can we... So, if I so may, would if you consider the killing of my I, daughters as terrorist? Well, I think it was appalling. Yeah. And I think... What, do you, you consider your, it as terrorist? I, I do not consider Israel well, to be a terrorist organisation. What well, the killing of my daughters? I, I think here's a question we have to ask ourselves, which is, um, since you have uh, defended um, uh, Israel's... Operation in Gaza as self-defense. Um, no, no, and no, since no, you have, don't misquote me. Don't misquote me. I've have defended. You, did, so you don't say it's part of their self-defense. No, then. let me clarify. Okay, I've defended Israel's right to defend itself. Right. Right. In fact, they have a duty to its civilians after Hamas's repeated threats since October the seventh to repeat it to defend. So, the so, so is the however, war in, is the war however, in Gaza not self-defense? or is it according to uh, your Let me just your, clarify your my position so you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. However, I have repeatedly questioned the proportionality of Israel's response, as indeed their greatest allies... But not America, the response itself. No, doing. But not the response itself, though. I think they're perfectly entitled to go and take okay, out... OK, so, so, so may, I, may I continue my question, then? I'll yes. You. So since, as I repeat, so since you have justified their response, maybe not how they've carried it out exactly, mm. but you justify their response as self-defence... Th their right to defend themselves by their, taking their, out the terrorists their right to who committed that atrocity, yes. OK. Uh, and and uh, presumably you refuse to call Israel, and you have refused when you've been asked to call Israel a terrorist... Uh, organization, government, or the idea for terrorist organization. Well, the difference is, here, here we How, are... Well, oh, hang on. In I, London, no, 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 no. Let me finish my question, please. No, no, I have a question for you. I must clarify... Let me, let me finish my question. You're making some okay, statements okay. that are a bit misleading. Sure. This country considers Hamas to be a prescribed terror group. They do not consider Israel... 
to be a terrorist organization, and nor do I. So that's the position. But, well, but, but I, I'm not well, asking you. The United States. The United States. I'm not asking. I'm not asking. It's important. I'm not asking the British government. I'm asking you, mm. Piers. I don't think right, the British government isn't here. Okay. I do not think there are so terrorists. Then let, now let me no. finish my question. If I can ask the question as well, right? Um, for us to discuss. So, considering that you have justified the operation uh, that Israel initiated as self-defense, and that you refuse to call Israel uh, a, ter uh, a terrorist organization mm. or a terrorist government, despite the fact that um, as many Palestinians, almost as many Palestinians, uh, Gazans have died uh, under Israel's precision bombing than as, the, as, as Londoners have died during the whole year of the Blitz under German bombing, which wasn't precision bombing. And yet you still say that, well, Israel isn't a terrorist organization. I think the question we should be asking is, shouldn't you, should you be suspended? Uh, is it responsible to have a person with your views mm. speaking to the public when you clearly refuse to uh, condemn that which needs to be condemned, which, okay. which was worse than the London Blitz. Per perfectly, Those that con perfectly reasonable... With precision weapons, and the Germans didn't even have precision okay. weapons. Perfectly reasonable question. Yes. And you've asked me it yeah. on my show. Yes. The fact you're here and able to ask that, I think, is evidence that I'm prepared to listen to people well, who will look me in the eye and ask me difficult questions. Well, you didn't know I was going to say that, but anyway, must, yes. <laughs> that's, fine, but that's fine. You're perfectly entitled yeah, to it. Yeah. We believe in uncensored free speech here. Yeah. But let me ask you the question, then, which I asked... You're not answering my question, but you haven't answered it. Well, I have. I said I don't think they're a terrorist organisation. Despite the fact that they've, they've killed almost as many yeah, Gazans as, question. as Germans you've did asked me a question. when they bombed London under you, the Blitz for have, one year I have non-precision bombs. I have given you an okay. unequivocal answer. Now, okay. let me ask you if you can give me one. Yes. Do you believe Hamas are a terror organisation? OK, and I'd like to ask you, what, what no, does no, that mean? No, just answer my question. Well, I need, I need clarification. Well, this country can, has prescribed I, I them as a terror group. Do you think they are? I, 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 are you the British government? No, I'm asking you, to what you. you think. Okay, so I want your clarification. I want a clarification. I gave you. you a simple, straight okay. answer. What does it mean? No, you tell me. I, I don't know. You're asking me a question. You so ask you the question. You don't think they are a terror group? No, I want, I want your definition. Of what, 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 do you, what is a terror group? An act that commits acts of terror. A group that commits terror attacks, as they uh, did on October the So one that commits terror attacks. All right, fine. Mm. So define terror. Do you want to ask the question attack? or not? I do, but I just want clarification. No, no. We all okay. know what terror is. Please, please. Called. No, no. no, no it, I, I, we, it, we, we're going to go somewhere with this. We are, no, no, we're going to go somewhere with this, right? Well, are you going to answer the question? You know, yes, yeah. once I get your definition. What's a terror attack? The definition is as is laid down in international law. Which it's is? It's committing an act of terror. Which is? Which is terrorism. Are you asking questions you don't know the definition of? Well, why don't you tell me what you think it is? I don't know. You're asking the question. You've no idea what terrorism is. No, I want to, I want your, to answer your I question. I would say massacring 1,200 people on October the 7th in the way Hamas did is an act of terror. Do so, you agree? So, so killing civilians is an act of terror? No, that's not what I said. Oh, so, so then killing civilians Committing is not an act of terror? Committing a massacre on that scale is well, terrorism. Well, so, so killing right. civilians is not an act of terror? You're not going to answer. Let me bring you... No, I, I want, no, I no, want no, your definition. Important. No, no. I want it, you to be consistent. We have a third guest. No, but I want, I want to be consistent. I'm going to bring in... I want to say something. All right. You know, really, you know... United States recognize BLO as a terrorist and it negotiates with BLO. Mm. This is one thing. The second, October 7 happened and many things happened after. Are we here just stuck there as a snapshot and to discuss it or we want to discuss what after and what can be done we do, in a but actually, way? That's the most important... I think they're, they're all important issues, but right now, because of what happened in the fallout from last night's show, I specifically want to discuss the definition of terrorism, Hamas, and whether a British but doctor... Hamas is but not the Hang on. But you have no, no, definition I'm going to bring in our third... I'm going to bring in Douglas Murray. You're just sitting patiently here. Douglas, uh, first of all, what was your reaction to this interview with a, an NHS doctor last night on this show? Well, let me first of all say that uh, it's, it's necessary to clear quite a lot of things up because we've heard quite a lot of hogwash in the last few minutes. Firstly, uh, your guest last night is a member of an extremist organization, Hezbollah Tahrir, which is banned in many countries, including in European countries. And it's also banned in many Muslim countries. It's banned in Pakistan, it's banned in Egypt, and that's because these Muslim governments recognize that it is an extremist group that has a revolutionary ideology that wants to replace Name government one European in Muslim countries as, one European as well as in... As, do you know... Germany. One European country is banned in um, Douglas Murray. I'm not going to let you lie to the audience like you usually do. I just You're going to justify you. everything just you say on this show, you. Douglas Murray. Right? So I please, I just give me said one country. Germany. That, it's not banned I in Germany. I just said it's not banned Germany. In Germany. 
Check you're it. not listening. You're Check not it. listening. Uh, you're uh, to, not to, listening. To the audience. Let me, let Google me, it for yourself. You know, His battalion in Germany, really are they banned weird. as an organisation? Is this... Is this Mr. Al Andalusi? Can I just check? Because I yes, can't see you. It is. Yeah. Is that him? Yeah. Okay. This is a guy. He's of no significance, but he's a guy who I have seen in studios for years, spouting extreme Islamist rhetoric. Many years ago, he couldn't condemn the killing of the journalist at Charlie Hebdo. Last year, he wouldn't condemn the attempted murder of condemn. Salman Rushdie. Well, now he can't slander. do this. He if fails this every Douglas single Murray test. But let slander. me get on to the question. Look, I'm not going Prove to it. engage. Prove, I'm not going to engage in a fun with. fight with this, with this Islamist. Let me answer the question that Piers put to me before you try to interrupt again. Only if you don't lie. Let him right. answer, please. I, I first that of all, you, let him first answer, much, please. But all right. First of all, I'm not going to keep being talked over by this Islamist blowhard. Let me speak. First of all, your first guest treated us to the first bit of mouthwash this evening by claiming that the word jihad can mean absolutely anything. Nonsense. When a big bearded member of Hizbut Tahir says calls for jihad on the streets of London, then they are not calling for an inner personal struggle with the nature of the divine. They are calling for violence. And anyone who can't recognise that should be questioned about their own motives. Secondly, you, we've just been treated to a, a monologue about uh, casualty figures in Gaza. Where do these figures come from? I'll tell you where they come from. They come from Hamas. It's quite remarkable this to is me a lie. that two months after the October the 7th massacre, that two months after the October the 7th massacres, the Israelis still don't know the precise number of people murdered on October the 7th. There's a reason for that, because it's it takes time Nations, to work out massacres of that scale. The one of the, are striking, one of the striking, you know, I just don't know if either of your guests are going to allow me a word in. Because you are lying, one of the and even the numbers of from Israel, from the IDF, no, which are not you, accredited. No, you will. You know, These you know are it's your really numbers. interesting hearing somebody who presents themselves, uh, who presents themselves as a moderate, being a spokesperson for Hamas. So let me continue. They are Hamas they figures. They are all provided by the ministries of Hamas, which is Hamas, which is a prescribed terrorist organisation. If you want to reel off Hamas figures, then be my guest. But you are not able to mislead the viewers of Piers' show by quoting Hamas figures at his viewers as if they are holy. I am not writ. quoting. Third, it's the Euro men. It's the nonsense. United Nations. We've been treated. It's the third, international third, community third, organisations. Where do you, you think they get the figures eyes. from? Where do you think you they get the figures? What from. You say is thirdly, fake. thirdly, I will continue to speak if it kills you. Thirdly, World War II, it is nonsense that what has been happening in Gaza has, as you said in this endless list of fallacies, that there has been more bombing in Gaza, more deaths and destruction in Gaza than during World War II. Do you no, know anything about almost. World War II? Almost, do you know anything about World War II? I in said, Dresden well, yeah, yes, alone, I do, Douglas, in Germany. Dresden do you know anything Germany. about World War II? Uh, alone, Douglas. take one well, German city. Take one German city. The destruction was on a scale totally dissimilar to what London. had been happening you know in Gaza. I'm taking London. London. I'm very interested. I'm very interested, the said, the I'm number very of interested and I will, once Gaza again, I will finish this point again, even if both of these blowhards keep trying to talk over me. Let me ask Douglas one question. I will finish the point I wanted to make. I'm going to come back to you both. Let me ask Douglas one question. Douglas, specifically about the doctor. It is very important for your viewers to hear the following definition. The definition of terrorism is the deliberate targeting of innocent civilians. That is what Hamas specialises in. That is what Hamas did and on October And that's what is happening in Gaza now, also. Is what, Israel is, is what Israel is doing terrorism? No, for the yep. following reason. And again, you can lie about this if you want, but do not expect not to be challenged about it. What the IDF is doing is the same manner of war as the British Army, the American Army, and all other armies in the civilised world. They target terrorists like Hamas, and there are civilian casualties. Yes, there are. But it is not the aim of the IDF, any more than it is of the British or American army armies, to target civilians. And anyone who pretends otherwise is lying to the public watching. All right, Douglas, final question before I go back to the two in the studio here. And it's specifically about the doctor that was on last night, whether he should be allowed to continue 
practicing as a GP, when he identifies Hamas as a resistance group, wouldn't say that it committed an act of terror, said he didn't even believe that there had been a massacre, uh, and was also quite blatantly homophobic, amongst other things. Well, he didn't, actually. Um, Douglas... But not Douglas, he said if. Let me ask Douglas... No, Douglas. please, please. Let me ask Douglas. Douglas, the, the medical no, association... Ask, no, I'm asking the medical I'll association... Come, I will come both to... I'll the come. medical association will, is the one who is assigned to... Fine. I'm asking Douglas what nah, his view is. Douglas. View, what's your He's view? not a medical doctor. I'm He's asking Douglas' opinion. Douglas. Well, you don't seem to be much of an impartial observer of this, I have to say myself. I thought, I thought slightly highly of you before you started ranting as much as Mr. Al Andalusi this evening. Um, uh, I'll tell you what I, what, what I thought of it, Piers. I think our country has had enough of people like your guest last night. It's not just that he's in the NHS. Why is he in Britain? Why do we allow people in Britain to try to overthrow the state who praise terrorism, members of extremist organizations? What, what has Britain got from this guy exactly? What benefit have we got from him? I mean, I wouldn't want to be an NHS patient going to him. I don't know if any Jews would particularly want to in Britain. I don't know if very many innocent people would want to go to this doctor. But my question is not, is not just should he be able to practice. I want to know why our country of Britain has been such a soft touch for decades that we have Hamas leaders terrorist spokespeople, Islamist sympathisers like your guest, Mr Al-Andalusi, and now NHS doctors who are members of, of, of groups like Hizbut Tahir that stand on the streets of London, call for jihad, call for Muslim armies to arise. I don't think our country benefits anything from these people. I think people like that should leave. We have no need of them. Douglas Murray, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I appreciate it. Let's come back to, to you gentlemen uh, to wrap this up. Let me start with you, uh, Dr Abelaj. Look, passions run high here on both sides. I get that. But there have to be certain points of agreement, don't there? And one of the things that I find very hard to deal with, like I said at the start of this debate, is when people simply won't accept what we all saw with our own eyes because Hamas put it out on their own videos through their own social media platforms. What happened on October the 7th was a terror attack. Can we not agree that? I am coming here as a Palestinian. Yes. I am not belonging to any faction, and Hamas is not representing the Palestinian people. We have to understand it. Mm. It's part of the Palestinian people. It was elected with the free democratic election in 2006. Since that time, we don't have any election. We look forward to have election, and we have to respect the election of the people and the choice of the people. If you, in UK, tomorrow to elect any right fanatic group, what do you think the other people will say to you? If they said, no, we are, they are terrorists or they are not accepted, they are part of the Palestinian people, whether we accept or not, we need to have a new leadership, to have a new election, and then it's our choice to, to do it. What is happening? As I said it clearly, before October 7, October 7, after October 7, will never lead to any positive way. It only aggravates bloodshed, more animosity, more pain, more suffering, and more extremism. I think, don't, I think, I think you may be right. And this has yeah. been my concern about the, in my view, increasingly disproportionate response by Israel, is it may have the opposite effect to what they want. It may actually lead to more radicalism. Uh, destroying most of Gaza seems to be what the mission statement is now. Mm -hmm. I don't see how that helps the situation at all. But I do understand why well, they want to try and eliminate Hamas. And that's the conundrum. Well, I'd like to clarify, firstly, um, Islamic law very clearly says, and there's no difference of opinion on this for 1,300 years or, or even more, that um, it is impermissible in whatever situation to target women, children, elderly, poor, non-combatants, or those not, uh, uh, not reservists in an army. So uh, even the, uh, the, the Hamas fighters, which were interviewed on, uh, on Israeli TV, there was, the broadcast was interviewed, uh, the interview, uh, they said the same thing, that it is, pro it is prohibited. Mm. The, the issue of October the 7th is that there's a, lot, there's a big question mark regarding um, what exactly happened. I no, completely no. accept... No, no, let me finish. What, what do I mean by this? I completely accept that there was... Um, uh, Israelis were killed who were not combatants. It is reprehensible in Islamic law. And likewise, it's reprehensible that uh, non-combatants... Uh, on the Palestinian side are killed, like, for example, um, an eight-year-old, Mohammed El-Ghul, mm. and, uh, and uh, others in West Bank who were shot 
by an Israeli soldier. But my point is this, right? And here's, here's the issue, which is Michael Clark, who advises, you might see him on Sky News uh, talking about Ukraine war. He's a military advisor yeah. oh, no. uh, on Channel and also Channel 4. He described, he said that um, Hamas, the, the, the operation, they actually lost control of the operation and it turned into a spontaneous terror attack. I'm quoting him verbatim. I don't here. believe a word of that. Well, but this is what he says as an, as I'm an expert. I'm giving you my opinion. I, I know, well, I'm, I'm giving you an expert opinion. It was clearly by Mike, planned, by, by orchestrated. Clark. Well... And it, then they gleefully in, boasted in, about it. In the... No, they didn't. Uh, in, they did? In the, where? Where did Hamas... The, do you know that quotation... You see no Hamas for people that day gloating about it? Are you um, watching the videos? Yes, I did. Did you watch that Hamas spokesman? You quoted that Hamas spokesman on TV. Yeah. Did you see what he said about the attack? He said that they had, there was no order to, to target civilians. What, what many... The, well, we know the, they did. A so, general, so, a general right. consensus of, all this of, of is, analysts have shown okay. that there was looters that came out of Gaza who were not part right. of Hamas. So my simple who question... Caused the, the, this, so my simple they, question is the same one... It's criminal. My uh, simple question is yes. this. Yeah. Was it a terror attack? Anyone who killed civilians yeah, should be condemned. It was a terror attack. reprehensible. Anyone who kills civilians is, is, is a criminal Was it a act. terror attack? What? October the 7th. And we never asked you, you said, what defines a terror attack is that they, you target You've civilians, right? You've had the definition right? from... Yes, OK, you target civilians, right? So then I, I want to ask... I'll answer that no, question. No, just answer I question. I want to answer that question, but I just... Just for sake of consistency, when the British Army targeted German civilians in World War II, was that a terror attack? No, because they were responding to Nazi Germany's attempt to destroy the world. So you're saying you that... You understand so, the moral so difference. That, so you're saying that... It, uh, because of who they were fighting, it's not a terror attack to kill to target civilians. Are you is, a, that, look, is that what you're saying? We have to wrap this up. I'm asking because I only no, want I'm consistency. Saying, from I'm saying you. there's no moral equivalence between us defending ourselves against Nazi Germany, who committed a holocaust that killed. In fact, they killed 12 million did, people. Did Britain launch war on Germany because of the Jews? Huh? Did Britain declare war on Germany because of for the sake of Jews? Britain declared war on Germany. Did Winston Churchill, in Britain, his ultimatum to, to Hitler, did he declared, say, stop persecuting Britain Jews? Do you know why? Because at that time, anti-Semitism was so rife right. that people didn't care about the plight of the really? Jews. It was only afterwards, after they discovered the death camps and so on and so forth. Mm. Don't pretend that the Allies launched this war of, of, for the sake of, of Jews. I didn't anti say that. Anti-Semitism We only discovered the full horror then. of the concentration camps towards the end of the yeah, war. I'm we, only did asking, to say, we did it to save our democracy and freedom. And right? the, and guess the what? idea is any and moral equivalence. What are the Palestinians are doing? What are the Palestinians doing? Listen, We've seen the Palestinians The idea is any moral equivalence yeah. is ridiculous. But let me come back one more time before we finish to my simple question: Was what happened on October the seventh a terror attack? Um, I'm, and I'm telling you that if you refuse okay. to call. The, the bombing, okay. the bombing of, Berm, of, right, of Dresden as a terror attack. I tried. Then I, why? I've got to leave it there. Is that uh, not hypocritical? I'm totally fine to call it a terror attack. Hey, hey, attack hey, if you're willing to call it a terror listen, attack too, listen, listen, let's, let's join each other Abdurda, in condemning bomb things, Lucy. including the IDF as a no, what they're doing as a, as a terror attack. I do attack. not believe IDF. Then that's is being a terror hypocritical. Attack. No, it's that's not. being hypocritical. Okay, that's your view. I'm happy to condemn all this as a terror attack. Yeah, you're not. You have to be consistent. It's more Final word to you. Yeah, Final word. You know. Yesterday, I was listening to the chief of Mossad and the chief of the Shin Bet. Mm. And he said, it's because of the failure of diplomatic and political issues. This is important. And there was negligence. And uh, what can we do now? And that's the most important as a medical yeah. doctor. We need to stop the bloodshed, to go to serious negotiations, to use it. Mm. What happened October 7 as an opportunity to bridge the gap between Palestinians and Israelis and not to repeat it okay. again yeah. and again. Doctor, I've got to end it there. Thank, Abdul, Abdul thank you. Ahead. Thank I don't you. think you I've should, got to should fire it. people from their jobs because to... they have different opinions well, you know in, in, in England. I don't think British GPs should be coming on national television in this country and breaking the law by publicly supporting and he, endorsing he a he, terror group. Where did he which break is, the law? by the way, where did a, he break the it's law? a criminal offence to support a terror group in this yeah. country. Yeah, of course. He did that last night. By what? When did By he actually support? By saying they were resistance, not a terror group. He was talking about... He justified what they did. He was talking about Palestinians in general. And that is a criminal... No. He was talking about Palestinians in general. He was talking about general. Hamas. Hamas. He, was talking about, he wasn't talking he about Hamas. He didn't watch the interview. Go back and well, watch it. Well, leave it for the police to investigate. He described right? it. He yes, he broke, Palestinians. he broke the Palestinians law. Palestinians want he broke the equal law. rights throughout whole of right. Palestine. You ask me why, that's why. P uh, Palestinians I've got to leave want equal rights throughout the whole of Palestine. Uh, again, oh, thanks wow. to Douglas Murray, to Dr Abulosh. It's good to thank see you again. You. Thank, thank you very you much. So much. Uh, Abdullah Al-Andalusi, thank you very much for coming in. I appreciate it.